the morning when I rise in the morning when I rise in the morning when I rise oh give me Jesus give me Jesus oh give me Jesus
John was able to see it shine. a place just for me I'll have a room with a view what sights I will see there the saints of all ages they will kneel at his feet around the throne but in my of my king Just one look will do To prove it's a room A room with a view There's only one reason Why I'll Saints of all ages, they will kneel at his feet around the throne. But in my new home, when I look out the window, I'll see the face of my
If you give a little more than you take And if you try to fix more than you break If you're the kind who takes the time to help a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you If you stand up for those down on their knees And lend a voice to those who cannot speak If you shine a little light Give sight to the ones who've lost their way There's a place for people like you I've heard of there the street are made of gold And when you get there There's a hand to hold I believe When your day's down here or through There's a place up there For people like you If you walk around With your heart on your sleeve Trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love So someone could be saved There's a place for people like you I've heard up there the streets are made of gold to hold I believe when your days down here or through there's a place up there for people like you Can you only imagine, can you imagine just standing before the king? Oh, I can only imagine what it would be like when I walk by your side. 
Ladies and gentlemen, families and friends of the deceased, we are gathered here on the seventh day of March 2024 to pay our final respect to um, a loving mother, a grandmother, a friend, an aunt, in the person of Fasuaz Alphos. Let me take this opportunity to welcome every one of you. And I trust that even as we celebrate the life of our sister, that indeed the presence of God will be with us to comfort and to cheer. For in such a time as this, the Lord have promised to comfort those who mourn. For us to begin our service, I invite us to please stand as we pray. Stand with us, please. Let us pray. Our great God and our eternal heavenly Father, this afternoon is indeed a wonderful privilege where we can bow in the awesomeness of your presence. We thank you for life and we thank you for Jesus who is the sinner's friend and the sinner's savior. Father, we are here today to pay our final respect to a loving individual. Indeed, oh Lord, she has lived a life that has brought you praise, honor, and glory. And this afternoon, we celebrate her in a special way and all the legacies that she's left behind. Father, this afternoon, as we sing, and as we celebrate, we pray that your anointing and your presence will be with us today. May you comfort those who mourn this morning, remembering um, Sister Olivia and her family. Lord, I pray thee that you, that you will please comfort her, strengthen her, hold her in her, your arms of love and remind her, oh God, that you will never leave her nor forsake her. May your angels join us as we sound your praises this afternoon. Let your name be exalted, we pray. In Jesus' name, let the church say, Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Our first number, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. Follow from your leaflet, please. God sent his son. 
of the living because Jesus lives today and how do I know that he lives dearly beloved because he lives within my heart hallelujah we will sing our next number it is well with my soul when peace like a river attendeth my way when sorrows like seas billows roll whatever is your lot this afternoon God has taught you to say that it is well it is well with your soul Hallelujah, hallelujah.
number covered with his life whiter than snow fullness of his life then shall I know my life of scarlet my sin and woe covered with his life whiter than snow Covered with it. 
final number, how cheering is the Christian's hope. and our sorrows will be over. I said we look forward to a day when our tears will be dried. We look forward to a day when there shall be no more funeral parlors, there shall be no more reefs, no more death, because the Bible says the former things have passed away. Do I have a witness in the house this afternoon? If you believe that, let me hear you say hallelujah. If you believe Jesus is coming again and he's coming for you and I who have prepared for his coming, let me hear you say praise the Lord. I know my sister is resting because she made her peace calling and election saw with the Lord. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, I shall see or we shall see our sister again. Hallelujah. I invite you to please stand. Please stand. Thank you for your beautiful singing this afternoon. Please stand. One number. Uh, we are going to sing our processional hymn, Trust and Obey, as the pallbearers will in the casket. You know, we are going to sing this song lively. We're going to sing it with enthusiasm. Oh! 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, eternal God, today we are so thankful for life. We are so thankful for your mercies, your grace, your love towards us. Father, at this moment, I commit this service into your hands. I'm asking that thou would give comfort, that would bring peace to those who are mourning, who are grieving. Also, that thou would console each one, dear God. For this is a, it is a difficult and challenging time. May your presence, the Holy Spirit, be with us today. And grant us thy blessings. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of God. Please be seated in the presence of God. Let me say a pleasant good afternoon to everybody. Good afternoon, everybody. We would like to first and foremost extend our deepest condolences to the family of uh, Mrs. Alfos, Miss Alfos. The truth is, you can never really tell what are the right words to say to someone in a moment like this. Because death brings with it a myriad of emotions. And so in my welcome today, I simply pray that every family member, every friend, every neighbor would find consolation in what transpires here today. And today is a celebration of the life of Miss Alphonse. And I pray by the grace of God that you would find strength on behalf of the Lakwa Mengo SDA Church, on behalf of my family. Uh, we would like to extend again our deepest condolences to every family member. To every family member. May God be with you this afternoon. And may you be strengthened by what transpires here this afternoon. I am Pastor Rod Rennie, one of the officiating ministers, and we also have with us the first elder of this church, Elder Mervyn Charles, and we have the one breaking the bread of life this afternoon, Pastor Randolph, the youth director of the St. Lucia Mission of Seventh-day Adventists. And so we are thankful today that you are here, and by your presence, it is a testament to the impact that... Uh, and I'm trying to get the pronunciation of the first name. Is it Fasoise? Fasoise, <laughs> Miss Alphonse, uh, had on your life today. May God bless you as we sing together the song, I Must Tell Jesus. All of my sorrows, may God bless you as we join our voices in singing, I Must Tell Jesus.
Please be seated. I invite at this time the elder statesman, the ever eloquent George Erie State, to do for us the eulogy at this time. Good afternoon to all. Bon après-midi tout le monde. Eulogy of Françoise Yulina Alphonse, also known as TSA and whatever else. This usually, this eulogy is for the eyes of her granddaughter, Nigali Alphonse, who is the only daughter of the deceased Beverly Alphonse, and Nigali lives in Edmonton, Canada. And as a matter of fact, Beverly's funeral was right here in this church. Now, in this eulogy, I've included two comments in the script. One about the trucks that used to carry us to castries and back, and something I discovered about TSA that is also similar to my wife. Françoise Yulina Alphonse was the last of six children of Attilud and Chinois. She was born on Friday, April 9th, 1937, and died on Thursday, March 7th, 2024. She was 87 years old. She was the mother of two boys and four girls. Yelena had the physique, that's the body, of Attilud, which was short and small. But she had a father's complexion, which is fair skin. A strong matriarchal presence, a lady of steel. Now, matriarchal simply means, in my own way, boss lady. So once you hear that, you know. And patriarchal would be for the men, matriarchal for the women. She carried all the titles, from grandmother to great, great grandmother, aunt, and so on. Now, niggle is speaking. Granny, I cannot believe that you've been laid to rest today. 
After hearing that famous phrase, Mweni Pue Jezi, so many times from you, I thought you would have always been around. She had a way with words, always spoke her mind with no regrets, and had a mind that could not be sweet. Once it was made up, that was it. Upepale konkuli kaipan. Whenever Oli, that is Olivia, the last daughter, whenever Oli and I got her upset, her first line of defense was, Yanku tet mokabao, mese bile kabutla. I remember later in life, we would jokingly remind her, kon kabutla kasi, upa bile anko. She was a hard worker who believed that by the sweat of thy brow, you shall eat. She worked the sugar plantations, as well as geese bananas in the Rosa Valley, and eventually settled as a farmer, who would go to Cassius on Fridays to sell her produce. Now that's the part I included. In those early days, there were three wooden trucks, making two trips to Cassius, two in the morning and two in the afternoon. And if you miss those trips, that's it for you. Those um, trucks were called Daily Bread, Caribbean Star, and O Baby. Later, those trucks were replaced by pickup vans, and now what we have is Pitbull and Transit and those things. Her typical Friday was like this. She leaves home for market with about $200 worth of food. She would give not more than $50 in credit to her pratik, or what you call her clients. With the remaining $150, she would buy groceries and come home with enough to send Oli and I to school. And enough as well for anything she lacked during the week and also put aside a little kakada for rainy days. Granny loved to share. Every morning, strong coffee for the elders and diluted coffee for the young ones. The fig, the banana, the vive te as ground provisions. And whatever else she came up with, she would share. Whenever it was volant season, everyone knew where to come for the fried flying fish. Granny ensured that Oli and I always attended school. We were never without our school uniforms, books, or money for school. Granny was very particular. If she was here today, I'm sure she would disagree with her present outfit. She had to try on many a dress, skirt, and hat until she finds whatever would fit to her taste and don't even think about making her change her mind on whatever she had settled upon. Now I know why my wife has that try this and try that every time she has to go out. <laughs> Everyone knows I was sickly from childhood. That's Ningali speaking, remember? Granny would carry me on her back whenever I fell sick, always taking me to the hospital and staying, me, staying with me for all those hours. Sometimes no one knew where she was, which was at the hospital with me. She was present during all my childhood sickness. Granny always warned us using the following quotes. Papan chapeau, kote ou pas sa joenli. Fe sans sa ou pas ni. Pa kite bagay lot moun brile ou. Pa depan as ou pies nom pou fe an yen ba ou. Debouye. Debouye bay ko. And I will add mine too. Never let anyone make you do what you don't want to do. 
Thank you, Granny, for raising me to be who I am today. Thank you for the values, morals, and ethics you instilled in us. Thank you for selflessly raising your children and grandchildren. Thank you for extending a hand to those in need. You have fulfilled what you were put on earth to do, and God has called you home. Rest well. Farewell, Francoise, Yulina, TAC, Mom, Granny Alphonse. Oh, and Billy Gabwit. Thank you very much. Amen. Uh, truly inspirational. Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 to 5. It says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. They shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain for the former things are passed away and he that sat upon the throne said behold i make all things new and he said unto me write for these words are true and faithful amen, amen. please stand to your feet with me at this time as we say a prayer on behalf of the family a prayer of comfort I need the prayers of those I love while traveling on life's rugged way in the key of D, if you don't mind. I need the prayers of those while traveling, while traveling on life's rugged way, that I may true, that I may true and faithful, and live for Jesus, and live for Jesus. I want my friends. I want my friends to pray for me, to bear my bear my tempted soul above and intercede with God for me I need prayers of those I love Father in heaven today we present to you the Alphonse family and all those that have been affected by the death of Francoise, for every great grandchild and every grandchild, and, and for every daughter and son, and every nephew and niece, and every grandchild and every neighbor and friend, every individual today, God, who has experienced brokenness as a result of the loss of Francoise, we ask in the name of Jesus. That you would provide for them the peace that passes all understanding. That you would rest upon them even now, mighty God, so that they can uh, attain consolation and peace even now. That they can lift up their eyes unto the hills from whence cometh their help, for their help comes from God. I pray, mighty God, in the name of Jesus that you will help, Father, even now to provide and be the balm in Gilead. Soothe their broken spirits even right now. 
I pray, Lord, that you will give them the assurance today that you are with them in this moment of darkness, in, the mo in this moment of pain, in this moment of brokenness, that you are right there for you said in your word that you will never leave them, neither will you forsake them. And so I pray, mighty God, in the name of Jesus, that you will hold the hand of every family member even now as they mourn, as they grieve, as they cry, as they weep, as Lord, uh, they are, uh, as they adjust even now to life without this beautiful soul. I pray that you would rest upon them, provide angels to give comfort, provide your Holy Spirit to give comfort and consolation in this moment. Bless the family and give them peace today in no other name. But in the mighty name of Jesus, let God's people say resoundingly, amen. amen and amen. Please be seated in the presence of God. The one that is assigned today to minister to you is a friend of the family. He is, of course, also a former pastor of this district. And he is now currently serving as the youth director of the St. Lucia Mission of Seventh-day Adventists. He's a husband of one wife, a father to one son. And ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure today to vacate the pulpit so that the man of God, Pastor Richard Randolph, can minister to you today and to bring to you a word of comfort. Uh, before he speaks, we will be favored by a musical rendition by none other than Robert Rennie at this time. We invite him, and the next voice you will hear after Robert Rennie will be Pastor Richard Randolph. God bless you, and God bless you. the sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet the midnight cry will be going home when Jesus steps out the midnight cry will be going home I look around me I see prophecies fulfilling And signs of the times They're appearing everywhere I can almost hear the Father As he said, son, go get my 
children Won't you go get my children And at the midnight cry At the midnight cry When she the name of the Lord. You know, after such powerful ministry through song, I mean, we can just head to the cemetery to put our sister in a final resting place. What do you see? This was so powerfully done by Robert. At the midnight cry, when Jesus steps out on the cloud to call his children, the dead in Christ will rise and meet him in the air. You know, this is a reminder that even in death, there is hope. It's a reminder that as long as you remain in Christ, you are safe and secure, even if you face death down here. In other words, death has nothing on us. As long as you are in Christ, you can be comfortable that one of these days, when the trumpet shall sound, we will be going home with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I want to, you know, just pause a while to extend deepest condolences to Olivia and the rest of the family on the passing of a wonderful individual, your mom. I know some of you have lost a mom, an aunt, a cousin, a friend. We know that there is nothing we can say or do that will remove the pain, the hurt, and the void that you feel. But we do know that there is one called Jesus who understands your pain. And he has promised to be with you, to be your source of comfort and your source of strength, even in the midst of this situation. So I want to encourage you to trust him. Hold on to him. Because he will surely come through for you in ways that you know not. Let me greet those of you who are here. Those of you who have come to support the family, we want to thank you for your support. We ask that you continue to pray with and for them as they go through this period of pain. Period of pain. Just want to 
speak to you briefly. I won't be long. Although preacher, they always say that um, pastors should not say that they won't be long. But I'll preach the word, but I won't be long. Sister Alphonse was a very close friend of mine. I mean, I met her in 2013 when I served here with Pastor Philip. And um, she wasn't a Seventh-day Adventist at the time, but she had values. She was always loving. She always embraced individuals because this was just who she was. She was very compassionate. And when we met for the first time, you know, she, she had such warmth and such motherly love that she extended to everyone she met that you had no choice but to just fall in love with this lady. She was a wonderful individual. And um, while it's sad that Earth has missed a wonderful person, we have the assurance that she is resting until the day when Christ will put an end to sin and death and to take his people home. We look forward to that day. We look forward to that day. I want to, I want to speak to you on a topic What's your legacy? You know, at funeral services, we don't speak to the dead, but we speak to the living. So I just came to speak to you and to challenge you to reflect on you. Especially since we too will end up in a casket just like our dear sister. So I want to read from 2 Timothy chapter 4. I'll just read three verses. 2 Timothy chapter 4 from verse 6, it says, Paul speaking, he says, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give to me on that day. And then he says, not to me only, but to all those who love his appearing. I've captioned this message, what's his legacy? Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father in heaven, may you speak to me, through me, to your people. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. What's your legacy? You know, we are told that legacy is a gift at will. Or something such as property or money that is received when someone has died. For example, we can say that Olivia perhaps, or oh sorry, our dear sister perhaps left a legacy of a million dollars. Legacy. You know, I would say praise the Lord. Because I'm sure all of us can do with a million dollars. Are you listening to me? Legacy, a gift at will. So, you know, many persons die and they leave a will behind. Giving property and so on to their children, grandchildren. And so on and so forth, a legacy. 
We are also told that a legacy is something transmitted by or received from an, an ancestor from the past. For example, she left her children a legacy of love and respect. So legacy could be something left behind like property. It, would, it could also be something, maybe a character trait that is passed on from one generation to the next. The question I want to ask you today is what is your legacy? Or what will your legacy be when death comes knocking at your door? Will your legacy be money, property, fame, and prestige? Now, there is nothing wrong in having property. There is nothing wrong in having a big house. Are you listening to me? There is nothing wrong in having these things. However, what shall it profit a man if he shall gain all these things and yet lose his soul's salvation? What's your legacy? Will it be property? Will it be etched in materialism? Or will it be love, a legacy of love, character, respect, integrity, and faithfulness? Amen. You see, some people believe that having a nice car, a big house, having, having land, a fat bank account, a prestigious job, good social status, is the best legacy to leave behind. There is nothing wrong in leaving it behind, but is it the best legacy to leave behind? You know, it is okay to have a good job. But if it's not complemented with surrender in Christ, it is worthless. Because you will only be fuel for the fire. This is what I appreciate about this lady this afternoon. Because she made it her business to live a life that is consistent with the life that Christ ordained her to live. She lived a life of love. She, she, she exhibited compassion. She embraced individuals because of what she felt inside. And we saw that, of course, it showed on the outside. She was so warm. I still remember visiting her at home. You know? She would welcome you. There is nothing too much to give to you. Because she was just so loving. This was second nature to her. Will your legacy be houses? Or will your legacy be character, integrity, and the like? The question I want to ask you again is, what will you be known for? When you die. Bearing in mind that you cannot escape death. And that you too will die one of these days. Now the truth is. We have conducted many funeral services as pastors. But we understand. That there is a reality that we must face one of these days. We too will be lying down in a casket. And somebody else will be conducting our funeral service. Because death is an appointment that no one can escape. In fact, Hebrews tells us in Hebrews 9.27 that it is appointed unto man once to die. As long as you are born of sperm and egg, you will die. As long as you are the product of a man and a woman, you will you will die. So death is, inevit is inevitable. 
You cannot escape death. You cannot avoid death. You cannot cheat death. And you cannot hide from death. Because whether you're in the air or under the water, you will still face death one of these days. Death will catch up with you. You know, but the truth is how a person faces death says something about the character that they embraced while they were alive and the character that they leave behind. You see, as I look at the life of our dear sister, I saw some parallel with that of Paul. You see, while Paul did not die, an old man or an aged individual, Paul concluded, even if he was awaiting execution on the Nero, that his task had come to an end. He lived a life in Christ, and he understood that because he was dying in Christ, there was hope for him. Sister Francoise enjoyed the Christian life because she recognized that there is hope beyond the grave only when you are in Christ. There can be only hope after death. When you have surrendered and submitted yourself to the will of God and say, Lord, take me and use me as you please. You see, how a person dies says a lot about how they lived. And oh, the text tells us that not only will we die, but after we die, the Bible says, you will have to give an account of the life that you lived. You will have to give an account of the life that you left behind. And Paul in Galatians tells us clearly that how you live matters. It says in Galatians chapter 6 verse 8, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that he will also reap. For he who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap everlasting life. Now let me unpack that a little bit. Where let me leave a Papa Moy, Ebima Moyote, farmer. Now everybody knows the context. Well, I, I guess, you know, during that time, I mean, it was the time of the green gold era. Most St. Lucians in the, in the south, at least, and west were farmers. So, I know about farming. Every time I got a break from school, they would take us to the farm. I shy figure I listened to me. I planted ashin. I planted yam, and so on and so forth. So I know about planting. Now, one thing I recognize is that while banana was the most planted crop during that era, if you wanted to harvest bananas, you had to plant bananas. It's a pathway. Bible is so planté, say so kai we call tea. It is so fair, say so we. Ma jeme we papa mwen planté da shin. Epi fechu. Thank you very much. Ma jeme we papa mwen planté banan. Epi epi fe fig. Si vous voulez banane, vous pouvez planter qui ça? Banane. Si vous voulez figue, qui ça vous pouvez planter? Figue. Si vous voulez dachine, qui ça vous pouvez planter? 
Dashin, the Bible says, whatsoever a man sows, that he will also reap. So if you want to reap the fruits of righteousness, then you must ensure that you sow the fruits of righteousness. So do not live carelessly and expect to receive the reward of the righteous. Because while God is a loving God, he is also a just God. And we've come here today to celebrate a life well lived. We came here today to celebrate a legacy that teaches us many valuable lessons moving forward. She cannot change the life that she lived because she is now gone. But we have the power to change what happens tomorrow because we are still alive today. And I think if she was alive, she would have appealed to all of you to live a life that is pleasing in the sight of God. Because God ultimately died to set us free and to give us hope beyond the grave. This is why Paul says that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor can our heart comprehend the great mysteries that God has gone to prepare for us. God has gone to prepare for us a heaven that none of us can even begin to comprehend. Let me hear some none. So the question I want to ask you is again, what will your legacy be? You see, Paul had a very rich legacy. The Bible says that he understood that his, his time of departure had come. Like our dear sister, I believe she knew she would die. And she lived a life that was pleasing in the sight of God. She held the faith. And she constantly looked up to heaven. Because she recognized that Christ would come very soon one of these days. Let me hasten on. Do you know why a good legacy is important? Do you know why it's important to embrace a legacy of love? A legacy of faith? A legacy of trust in God? Because Paul says that the day is coming when your reward will be sure. First Thessalonians chapter 4 from verse 14, Paul says, Brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant concerning those who have fallen asleep in Jesus. So do not be ignorant. But he says, if God raised Jesus from the dead, even those who sleep in Christ, will God also raise from the dead. And then he jumped to verse 16 and says, one of these days, Jesus Christ himself will come back to earth to take care of business. He says this mission is so important that he will not leave it to an angel, but he will do it himself. The Bible says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. You see, if you live in Christ and die in Christ, then you will be resurrected in Christ. Let me say that again. In order to be resurrected in Christ, I must first live for Christ. And then I must die in Christ. In order to be resurrected in Christ. In other words, if you are not willing to live for Christ and to die in Christ, then it's impossible to be resurrected in Christ. So I want to encourage you to follow our dear sister and to make it right with God before it's too late. 
He says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And Paul says in verse 18, Wherefore comfort one another with those words. Because the word of God is sure. You know, I remember the songwriter who says, There is a land of pure delight where bliss eternal reigns. Infinite day excludes the night and pleasures banish pain. He says, we're traveling to Emmanuel's land. We soon shall hear the trumpet sound and soon we shall with Jesus reign and never, ever, 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 ever part again. The day is coming when God has promised to make all things new. The day is coming when death itself shall receive a deadly blow and die. The day is coming when sin will not be able to claim any more individuals because death itself shall die. You know, I am comforted with the words of John. You know, John, the apostle John, last apostle, who was alive at the time, he was exiled on an island called Patmos. And while he was there, God gave him a vision of the future to encourage the saints. And he said, Behold, I look, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the old heaven, he says, and the old earth, they will pass away, and there was no more sea. And he says, then he saw a city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. And he said, he said, in that city, he saw two groups of individuals. He saw God, and then he saw God's people. He saw people worshiping. He saw people celebrating because they were now redeemed. They were now in a context where sin and death could not affect them anymore. And then he said, God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. God will wipe away your tears, Olivia. God will wipe away your tears, family members. God will wipe away your tears, friends. Because God will take care of this business one of these days. He says, he says, and God shall wipe away all tears from our eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more pain, no more crying. Because these things would be of the past. In other words, there is a day coming when there will be no need for the undertakers. Because Lazarus, Rambali, and Creeks will be out of business. There is a day coming when there will be no need for the hospitals because no one will get sick anymore. There is a day coming when we will have no need to cry. No pakaini go che encore paske tout bagay ki kai fet an di dan we yoms bon die. Say joy te epi joy te to sell. God has promised to make all things new and to put an end to sin and death one of these days. I trust today that you will embrace a legacy patterned after our dear sister Francoise, a legacy of love, a legacy of respect. A legacy of faithfulness. A legacy of trust in God. So that as we live, Christ will give us the strength to overcome and to keep our connection with Jesus. So that we will be safe and secure in his hands. Those of you today who may not have had the privilege to just pause and submit your life to God. I want to give you this opportunity to do so even now. I want to ask you 
wherever you are, if you are impressed, to raise your hand so I could offer a word of prayer so that God can bless us and prepare us to meet him when he comes the second time. Let us pray, Father in heaven. We thank you so much for your goodness towards us. We pray to God that you will bless us as we trust you and as we live for you. Be with everyone who's here, dear Father. May you seal every decision made today to follow you and to live for you, particularly in a very critical time in the history of the world. We pray a special blessing upon the family of the deceased. May dear God, you strengthen them. May you comfort them. And may they feel your warm embrace as they trust you for healing and for comfort. And as we live here, in a, as we will be living in a, in a while, I pray to God that you will continue to watch over us. In Jesus' most precious name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Pastor Randall, for that soul-stirring and soul-searching message. Amen. At this time, I invite the individuals scheduled to sign the register to meet me in the vestry that is on my right. That's your left. The four individuals scheduled to sign the register meet me on my right. That is your left. Oh, yes. And while we are signing the register, we will be favored with a musical rendition by a man with a golden voice. A man who, when he sings, birds get jealous. Ladies and gentlemen, I invite St. Rose Myers to sing for you while we sign the register. Good afternoon, brothers and sisters. By special request from my dear sister Olivia, said that mom loved this song. And I, I want to believe she had all the reason in the world to love a song like this because she saw Zion. She knows she will rise again. That's why she loved this song.
sings. We have at this time the vote of thanks that will be done by Leah Gilbert. Leah Gilbert will do for us the vote of thanks at this time. We, the family of Françoise Alphos, also known as Yulina, Mum, or TAC, would like to thank everyone for their support throughout this difficult time. Thank you for your support and your kindness. Your sympathy for our recent loss will always be remembered. Thank you sincerely for all who have done all that you have done in our time of need. We are grateful to have you here to honor Françoise. Thank you for the many ways that you have helped us throughout this time. Special thank you to those who visited, called, prayed, helped in the kitchen, and encouraged the family. Also to those who attended the funeral, decorated the church, and participated in the service. Thank you to the LNO studio for the live stream. Thank you to those who provided transportation services, those who sacrificed the comfort of their beds, and kept the family company at night, and those who in any other way assisted the family throughout this difficult time. Once again, we say thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen, amen, and amen. We have come to the end of our service. I invite the choristers to do for us the song... Never part again. Now, the reason why I'm asking them to do that song now is because the Lockways Dear Church is currently in construction mode and we are trying to restructure, revamp, and rebuild. And so at this time, we are going to invite the deacons to assist us to collect a special offering. 
And while we do the song, Never Part Again, our deacons will assist us in collecting a love offering. And after that, we will sing the song, When We All Get to Heaven, as our recessional hymn. Choristers, please join us as we sing the song, Never Part Again, as our deacons collect a love offering at this time. stand to your feet with us as we bring our service to a close and once again we thank you immensely we thank you immensely for being here today all heads bowed and all eyes closed father in heaven once again we ask for an outpouring of the holy spirit upon the lives of those who are broken and as we leave this place go before us Provide for us the comfort necessary to be able to navigate through this difficult storm 
through these tumultuous waters and through the vicissitudes of life. May you touch the family members of Faswaz and give them hope in such a hopeless world, in such a decadent world. Teach us, God, to remain faithful to Jesus so that, God, we can all cling to the blessed hope in this life. We thank you and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, we invite the pallbearers to join us at this time as the casket will be wheeled out. Pallbearers, please join us at this time, followed by the family members. Once again, we want to also thank LNO Studios for live streaming this service. Thank you very much and God bless you. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. God bless you.
עוד יותר שאלה. יאללה אבל עוד לב. יאללה אבל עוד לב.
and lend a voice to those who cannot speak. If you shine a little light, give sight to the ones who've lost their way. There's a place for people like you. I've heard up there the streets are made of gold. And when you get there, there's a hand to hold. I believe when your days down here are through, there's a place up there for people like you. If you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you're trying to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place 